I hope you're having a great day and I hope you had a great weekend. Today I want to talk to you about something I speak to all my patients about and I've seen it work. It's not just what I see that's working, it's based on science, it's based on years and years and years of people talking about the simplicity and the power of imagination. How can we use this simple tool that exists in all of us? We don't have to be whole and complete to use the power of imagination. There are people who are born with disabilities, people who are born without eyesight, without hearing, and they've used the power of imagination to create extraordinary lives and extraordinary experiences for them. Today, we're, we're stuck in a world which is driven with fear and greed. It's not our faults entirely. We become the consumers because we fall prey to fear and greed. Any products that we're buying, anything that we're doing, uh, instant gratification, quick fixes, is all, is all driven by fear, insecurity, and greed. So it's like a drug. One, once they get you on to fear and greed, it just grows more and more and more. And all of a sudden, you find that you're living your life from the space of fear and from the space of greed. When that happens, the outcomes can never be pretty. The outcomes can never be happy and joyful and fulfillment. It is always miserable, constantly chasing more and more, and worse, not solving the problem that we want solved. We thought that more comfortable mattresses would give us better nights of sleep. It doesn't for everyone. We thought more money in our bank account will make us happier. A lot of people think that fame is the ultimate calling for them, and they realize that it isn't true. While it is for some, it isn't for many. The point is what works for you. Imagination, what a beautiful tool. The power of imagination. What you're gonna understand today is imagination, will. These two important things. We start off with a simple story. It's not my story. It's what I learned from a book called The Power of Auto Suggestions by a psychologist that lived many, many years ago. What fascinated me was after that, there were many, many, many books. There's The Biology of Belief by Bruce Lipton. There's The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy and several books. There's The Secret. There's The Magic. There are so many beautiful books. There's Napoleon Hill, <clears throat> uh, Think and Grow Rich. There are so many beautiful books that have been written based on the same concept. But to make it simple, let's extract the word imagination. Now imagine like in his story, okay, there's a plank of wood and it's about 15 centimeters, okay, in width. You put it between two rocks and you climb across. If you fall off, you're just going to put your foot down and you'll be safe, okay? Now you take the same plank of wood, the same size, and you take it up and put it between two skyscrapers. You wouldn't be able to walk across it. Most people wouldn't. Why? You could do it. You could walk across this plank of wood at a particular level. Your imagination, yep, you see yourself crossing it, you've done it. The same plank of wood, you've taken it up several, several stories high into a building, you can't do it. Why? What's come in between your imagination? Fear. Fear doesn't allow you to do what you could imagine to do, what you imagined to do. You could do it when the plank of wood was lower and lower. What do we learn from this lesson? Everything that exists in today's world and in your life has started off with imagine has started off with imagination, the good and the bad. When I look at a lot of my cancer survivors, while there is the hand of God over it, there is also the imagination of these patients. They just didn't believe that this disease should consume them. And likewise with road accident victims, people who had lost both limbs and then, you know, gone on to compete in Paralympic sports and so many other things about the bodybuilder who didn't believe he could lift a particular weight or she could lift a particular weight, but imagined they could and they did it when it seemed impossible to everyone else. Now, how do I use the power of imagination? Imagination can work both ways for us. We can imagine the best and we can imagine the worst and we can get both of them. Because your imagination works with the subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between reality and it doesn't know the difference between a truth and a lie. So the point is, that is why your subconscious mind is programmable. How do you program it? Imagination. Look at your life today. Look at our lives today. We're imagining the worst. We get cancer, we imagine the worst. We get diabetes, we imagine the worst. We have a breakup, we imagine the worst. Your child doesn't do well in school, you imagine the worst. 
you know, your, your parents get sick, you imagine the worst. The point is, is this imagination serving us? It isn't. Because the world's made us believe. Marketing is imagine your hair better with the shampoo. Imagine your sleep better with this very comfortable mattress. Imagine your body with all this excess protein and they sell you a product. So we've begun, we begun to use our imagination from a space of fear. Now, what if you take this imagination and you use it the way you want to? If I sit you down and I say, here's a piece of land by the river. Okay, now build your most beautiful home. You're gonna imagine the best home to go with that river and the countryside. You're not gonna imagine the worst. Why? Why? Ask yourself these questions. Why do we choose to imagine the worst? Because we're programmed to, and we need to break that cycle. You have a disease. Okay, no one's got to decide anything. How you come out of the disease, whether you'll survive, whether you'll die, no one knows that. It's not for us to know. We're on God's timetable. But we can use our imagination to change everything. So everyone who's ever broken any world record, gone beyond human potential, superpowers, supermen, superwomen, come out from the most deadliest diseases, have also used the power of their imagination. Today, if you choose to imagine a different outcome from your relationship, it can change. If you decide to imagine a different outcome from your treatment, it can change. And many times it won't, because if it's your destiny to die, if it's my destiny to die, I am going to die, period. But that doesn't stop us from imagining, because it's useless being in control of what we cannot see or what we cannot feel. If there's a relationship at work going bad, all it takes for you to do is start imagining the outcome that you want. Now, a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to do this. Why not? The other's not working for you. Your other way of living and your approach towards your relationship and everything else isn't working for you. So why not try flipping it on its head? Why not try imagining the outcome that you want? This is very, very close to visualization. And that's, what, that's why the power of visualization is so strong because you can visualize the outcome that you want. Now, a lot of people are afraid of using imagination and visualization because they're already scared of failing. They're scared of rejection, they're scared of disappointment, and that's why these people stay where they are, victims. The point is, you can't control that, and what's wrong with rejection? What's wrong with a little failure? Sometimes the things that we visualize and imagine for, uh, for in our lives don't come to us because we're not meant for it, or it's not the right time. So we should be okay with failures and setbacks and disappointments and expectations not being met. The point is today, how are you going to take imagination? Right now, if you're feeling at the lowest point in your life, what are you imagining? I can tell you right now, you're imagining the worst out of your situation. Whether you have a disease, you're in a bad relationship, your business isn't doing well, your job, your work culture isn't great, your job isn't going well for you, your children aren't doing what you want, or you know, uh, living up to your expectations. If you just start to imagine the outcome that you choose, that you want, that you want, and if you can align good with imagination, if you put imagination into creating evil and running out of ego and pride, running imagination out of ego and pride, it's never going to work for you. But when you can align good with imagination, powerful, powerful. I see it every day in my patients. A lot of my life is built on imagination as well. But the moment you start imagining things, a lot of people will start to point holes into it, shoot bullet holes into it, say, no, it's not possible. It's impossible. All of that stuff. Be careful of that. Still imagine. Still imagine, imagine and put in the right action, put in the right amount of work because imagination is the first step and then you got to go on with living your work. So let's say you're in a bad job right now, but you want something. Imagine the outcome of it and go back to work, go back to work. Just continue with that imagination. So when you shift the energy from imagining the worst and what you don't want into imagining the best and what you want, your life is going to change at every single level. So your homework is simple today. Make a list of all the things. Make a list of all your feelings, the not so good feelings. Now, what are you thinking and imagining? And how can you reimagine the outcome that you want? So a lot of people are stuck with weight loss and cravings of food and all of that stuff. And they've just built the worst imagination of the outcome. What if you start imagining that, okay, I'm doing my best. I'm working out. I'm doing everything. But when I eat a dessert, it just works for my body. 
It breaks down, it nourishes my hair, my skin, all of that. Imagine a different outcome. Now, of course, it's stupid if you're gonna keep doing the bad, that eat a dessert every single day or twice a day. That's common sense. The point is, you imagine the outcome of what you want anything in life to be. Do this six, seven, eight, nine, ten days and share with me how you feel because I can guarantee you it's gonna work for you. Imagination is driven with a deep desire. Now just don't imagine yourself with a billion dollars on an island and you're laughing it off and stuff like that. No, a deep desire to be that billionaire on an island, if that's your desire, or a deep desire to heal from your cancer or your disease, a deep desire that you get to that proper weight or you get build that proper business or, a, or an idea of a business comes into your head. Deep desire, imagine the outcome of how how you're going to be when it happens. What is that outcome? You need to know it first for imagination to work. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.